Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, we look back at the best of 2020. Yes, it's been a fairly crap year, but in amongst all the gloom, there have been some highlights, mainly in the cycling world. There have indeed, some real gems. This is one of my standout favourites. <coughs> I hope we got far oh, enough through that. Thank God for that. And this. <sighs> Okay, I will get my own back later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. Uh, we're also going to have the top 10 hacks and bodges of 2020, and we've got some wintry themed inspirational photo winners. <laughs> this year in the world of cycling, we learned that the winner of 2020 was cycling. That's right. To be fair, 2020 didn't give it that much competition, did it really? No. But in amongst all the awfulness, the hardship and the doom and gloom, more bikes were sold and more miles were ridden than ever before. Happy days. Every cloud and all that. Indeed. Although not to look too negatively at this new side, but it did mean that some people were unable to buy a bike or a spare part in 2020 due to a lack of supply. And also, some people got so fit during those lockdown months that I lost loads of Strava KOMs, including the finale of Strada Bianca. Oh, damn. Hmm. That's awful, isn't it? Do you know what's worse, though? There's nothing worse. You will never get those KOMs back, mate. <laughs> that is what was. Well, no worse. true word spoken. Indeed. Another thing that we learned this year is that even when there's no official racing, you just can't stop bike riders from competing. It seemed like every week during the summer, there was news of an Everesting world record. Which was brilliant for the GCN show, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Because there was something to report on <laughs> pretty much every week. And the whole thing seemed to be sparked off by Phil Guyman, who took the record, but he only held the record for 48 hours before Keegan Swenson took it off him. Uh, not that long after that was Lachlan Morton over in Boulder for EF Pro Cycling. Then Alberto Contador threw his hat in the oh, ring yeah. and took some amount of time off that, but didn't hold it for long either because Ronan McLaughlin in the north of Ireland uh, took the record with a very good time. But the first ever sub seven hour was set by Sean Gardner, who holds it to this day. That is all mightily fast, it isn't is, it? Yeah. Really? Uh, poor old Max Stedman, he could have got it, but unfortunately we turned up. <laughs> some GCN yeah. men that, um, that he, he cracked inside the, the final few hours and, um, and didn't make it. But anyway, on the women's side of things, it was exactly the same in that we had Katie Hall sparking things off, followed by Lauren DiCrescenzo, followed by Hannah Rhodes, before finally Emma Pooley seems to put it on the shelf, at least for the time being anyway, and a worthy holder of the record, I, I think, think Emma. I think so, yeah. I yeah. mean, she was always far too good to be a GCN presenter, <laughs> wasn't she? Yes, she, she was. And finally this year, we learnt that you are the best cycling fans in the world. Uh, whilst we had very little to complain about during the pandemic and lockdown, it did mean that we had to change the way that we filmed, but you stuck with us, and for that we would like to thank every single one of you. Yes, and it is frankly remarkable that you stuck with us all, particularly given Dan's lack of focus during that period. Oh no, am I out of focus, for <laughs> sakes. Well, if that's you getting your own back on the bloopers from the start of the show, then I will take it. Although, incidentally, uh, that was one of the most viewed GCN shows of the entire year. It was, yeah. Proof, if proof were needed, that people prefer to see you when you're not in HD. <laughs> Well, I'm sure there's something in that, yeah. <laughs> in all seriousness, though, uh, we've had a blast again in 2020, and it's been brilliant to have you all along for the ride. It has, from the literal home training videos with Manon and Jeremy, to Hank's multiple extreme challenges, like 24 hours on Zwift and trenching, amongst others, to Connor's garden velodrome hour record attempt, to meeting brother-in-law Nigel for the first time, to meeting Hank's dad, in fact, for the first time. Plus, it almost doesn't feel like this year, but Ollie's hour record, remember that? Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. That feels like a long time ago, doesn't, doesn't it? it just, uh, you missed yeah. out a very important one in that. Right? Yeah. Uh, from Lorraine, my wife. Ah, yes. Uh, she's still checking the comments daily on her video, which is how <laughs> to cl use clipless pedals for the very first time. Yes. Well, I'm not surprised, actually. Very good video. Um, and also, incidentally, Dan, the most viewed video you've been in all year. <laughs> so. How much longer do I have to do this, Dan? Oh, uh, a few more minutes and I'll be, uh, you'll be ready to go out, I think. Yeah, I don't need you to remind me of that, Si, because Lorraine also does that every single day too. Sorry, Dan, Well, there's Sorry. another video missing from your list of highs from this year, Si. Uh, the Uphill Hour Challenge, in which Ollie Bridgewood beat you. 
Ah, yes. That did completely slip my mind, mm, that one. Um, partly because he cheated as well. Well, he didn't no. cheat. He used well, the rules to his advantage. He wasn't within the spirit of the rules. <laughs> he was in a grey area just because the rules were not Did he fully not obey out. the unwritten rules that were in your head and your head alone, Sorry. Well, yes. I mean... I, I, perhaps I should have taken longer to write a detailed set of mm. rules. Yeah, yeah. good to see that you got over it a few months later. Though. Yeah, well, Manon, Manon played fair. She was great that day, but uh, mm. yeah, never mind. Anyway, we shall move on because we also wanted to thank all of you who subscribed to Race Pass this year, which we launched back in July, uh, ready for the return of the World Tour, which was Strada Bianca on the 1st of August. We were overwhelmed, really, both by how many people had decided to subscribe to Race Pass, but also uh, with the feedback that we got. Yes, feedback that we have listened to and we're working on some seriously exciting things for 2021 as well. Bring it on. What a season it was. It was brilliant. I can't Short, wait for next season already. Cyclocross still on at the moment though, of course. I've got to say though that despite all of what we've just been speaking about, what got me most excited in 2020 was just seeing so many people on bikes in yeah. my local area. All types of cyclists. You had families, kids were out, you had people on brand new bikes that they just bought. You had people that obviously dusted down bikes to use for the first time in years. I even saw an adult learning to ride a bike for the very first time, which was utterly brilliant to see. So long may it continue. Absolutely. What we need to do now, I guess, is to make sure that all those people that are returning to cycling or new to cycling keep cycling because we know it's a great mm. sport. So we've just got to make sure everyone else stays with us. Exactly. We'll keep them in there. We'll get more people onto bikes in 2021. And uh, from that point of view, actually, along with all of the features that we've got planned for next year and races that Cy can hopefully win so he's in a better mood, uh, we're also planning a whole load of beginner content to encourage people into the sport and to give more knowledge to those who've just started cycling. And also in everyday life, we can all encourage new cyclists to learn and to get better and to keep them on two wheels, can't we? Yeah. Encourage a cyclist. I like that. Do you think I should chat encouragement at random people as they're going past? Or do you think it should be like more of a... I think just welcoming and not being elitist. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. It might be a bit weird if someone's riding down the, you know, the road and like, well done, go on, keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just before we end this segment, I wanted to leave you all with a 20 second montage. Oh, I love a good montage. But I don't get too excited. It's a montage of Hank's thumbnail faces. <laughs> He's just one of those people, Hank, that can't have a normal face for a photo, isn't he? No. Can you do it? Because, well, it's just as soon as the camera's pointed at him, he just goes like... Anyway, we've got some better photos for you now because it's time for the final GCN inspiration of 2020. Oh. This is the moment, of course, where you have submitted your photos or videos. We pick our favourite three and they all win a prize. That's right. Now, in third place this week, winning a pair of GCN Elite water bottles. We've got this one sent in by Adam A. Kennedy, who says, short rides and even shorter days. Road cycling season only stops if you let it stop. About to turn on the lights in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. That's what proper winter looks like. <laughs> As we are reminded by many Canadian fans, every winter. Indeed we are. Look at that though. Beautiful sunrise. Yeah, proper winter that. Oh, it's uh, enemy. If he's about to turn the lights on, maybe it's a sunset. Yeah, proper. It looks a bit treacherous though, doesn't it? Which it is does. a theme to the photos that I have chosen this week. In second place, receiving a decent core t-shirt in blue, plus a decent cobbled classic tee, Ooh. is Riper 56, Winter Wonderland. Wow. Early morning ride with my wife just outside Quebec City. It's winter, which means fat bike season. So another Look one from Canada. That. Uh, didn't get first place due to the fact that it is in portrait mode. Looks Ooh. great on the app, less so on a YouTube video, but that is a cracking photo all the same. That is amazing. It makes fat biking seem like you know, I've never really seen the appeal before, but now I see it. That <laughs> looks fantastic. Uh, right, in first place, though, there can only be one winner this week. Winning a new book, Endurance, How to Cycle Further by Mark Beaumont and Laura Penhal, plus a GCN core t-shirt in red and two GCN Elite water bottles. It's a stonking first prize, isn't it? Anyway, we've got this one sent in by Kapanika. Sunday ride from Slovakia. Mm. That is a beautiful photo. What a photo it? that is. Well, I did read in a comment a couple of weeks back, someone complaining that the inspirational photo winner didn't have a bike in it. But that's not the entire point. It's nice to have bikes in it sometimes, but the point is to inspire you to get out on your bike. That said, looking at this photo again, it looks quite slippery in that one as well, doesn't it? It does look slippery, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I'm a fat with bike you. again. I think, I think a photo doesn't have to have a bike in it to make me want to go and ride there. No, 
just makes it, we just need to have photos that make you want to get on your bike. That's the point of this segment. Indeed. So well done to all three winners this week. Absolutely. Yes, please keep those photos coming in. Upload them to the GCN app. And of course, once you're there, you can look at all the other amazing photos that other people have uploaded as well. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and seeing as this show has been recorded, well, a couple of weeks in advance, we thought we would run through some of the best and most inspiring news stories from 2020. We did, and we're going to start with charity rides. There were a whole load of charity rides, raising a whole lot of money for important charities. Well, the one that stands out in my mind was that of Molly Weaver. I'm sure you'll remember. Uh, but she created a 100 metre course in her back garden, or might be in my mum's back garden, I think, which she then went on to ride 1,300 times. Oh, yes. And the weather that day was not great, so it turned the back garden and her ride into something of a mud fest. Um, and therefore, it suited the name that she'd given it, which was Dirty Weaver. A uh, play on words from the Dirty Reaver gravel race that had sparked the idea at having been cancelled. Anyway, as well as racking up 130 kilometres, she also racked up £14,000 for charity, for women's aid here in the UK. Amazing. It was brilliant. Uh, and along with a whole multitude of charity rides, we also saw a multitude of new bikes claims around many cities in the world. Uh, some of them permanent, some of them pop up. Unfortunately, some of the pop up ones do now seem to be disappearing. Popping down? Yeah, but there's absolutely no doubt that a lot of governments the world over are now spending much more time thinking about cyclists and pedestrians when it comes to future plans for their transport infrastructure, which is great. That's right. Remember to keep making your voices heard, everyone, because undoubtedly there are more bike lanes now than there were 10 months ago, because as we've already mentioned in the show, there are more cyclists now than ever before which is great. And that's also had the knock-on effect of really helping local bike shops not just stay in business, but also thrive as yes. well. That's been brilliant as well, hasn't it? Uh, lots of sales at bike shops, but also lots of repairs, keeping their mechanics busy too. Because as we mentioned before, lots of people dusting down bikes from their sheds and garages, which they need to make roadworthy. Although, some people are looking for a little bit more than roadworthy. Oh yeah. Uh, do you remember Sarah Pierce from back in the spring? Uh, so her husband, Nick, uh, is an ICU nurse. And so for his birthday, she had restored a 1989 specialised hard rock adventure. This is what she presented him with. Oh, I do remember it now. Mm. Yes, great job, Sarah. That looks cool. Bike companies were also doing their bit to help out where they could. Santini started making face masks in their clothing factory. 3T started making carbon respirator parts for uh, Italian hospitals. Then, uh, what else do we have? Uh, Brompton started uh, lending bikes to NHS workers for free so they could continue getting to work here in the UK. And also Muckoff started supplying antibacterial chamois cream for um, healthcare workers' hands. Proved to be a particularly good barrier for them. So. Uh, Friends, yeah. Uh, Pro Cyclers got in the act too, didn't they? Did. they? David e. Martinelli swapped his Astana Lycra for courier clothing and he was delivering essential medicines and food to those, those, those most in need of it, shall I say, in his hometown in Italy. Dylan Grunewagen was doing something very similar in his hometown in the Netherlands, but then Elise Chabay had already taken things to a different level anyway, hadn't she? Yes. She is a pro cyclist who put her career and training on hold uh, because she's also got a medical degree. Uh, which he put to very good use at Geneva Hospital on the front line. Brilliant, Brilliant stuff. Brilliant. You know, that's maybe how we should try, at least, and remember 2020. You know, all of these amazing positive things in amongst all the horrific, awful things. But there was a lot out there to say, wasn't there? A lot of it involving cycling and also cyclists as well. It was. Well, I think we were thinking that we might struggle for news stories in lockdown on the GCN show, but in the end, we had more good news stories than we could fit in the show most weeks. Yeah. It's now time for Hack Forward Slash Bodge of the Year. Uh, these are the hacks and bodges which received the most votes on the GCN app, thousands each, uh, so in no particular order. First up, this one from Heck Heck 17 Zip tie hack lost the link, so zip ties worked. Did they work? Did they really? They I wouldn't just... work with our power side, would they? Not we probably a did that chance. joke the first time, but we'll go with it again. Yeah, um, I'm pleased to see that 60% of those thousands of votes uh, said bodge because, <laughs> um, because as, as pretty as it looks, this is not a hack, is it? No, this no, is not, not a hack. at all. No. Uh, moving on, 
this one uh, was just a few weeks ago, I think. Solution to cover the frame holes if you upgrade to an E-Tap. Use foam earplugs, paint it, and pinch the ends to fit the hole. That one came in from JCPC. I yeah. think we said hack at the time, didn't we? 7, I think we did say people hack said too. Yeah, nicely done. Oh, actually, no, I think I said because it wasn't 3D printed. And there's still part of me that's like, come on. <laughs> in this day and age, 3D print something. But uh, still, good effort. Uh, in this one, we had from Scott 8, hot desk, oh, sorry, host desk uh, at a local restaurant. Spotted this um, at a restaurant in Independence, Oregon, USA. I think that's wicked. It does look cool, doesn't Vintage it? Vintage bike. I'd like one of them in my house. It would look great. Uh, next up, this one that came in. You could make one of those, mate. <laughs> old old race bike. You haven't seen me and my dust, DIY skills. Dust off a Cervelo from <laughs> 2009. I'm not putting a tabletop on a Cervelo. <laughs> <laughs> um, Constant Inc. Uh, we had a lot of bike racks this year. Obviously, a lot of people with a bit more time than they thought they would have this year, looking to make the most of it by making bike racks. And this is one of the best. A space for one road bike and one gravel bike hanging below three doors, drawers, shall I say, for tools and gear. One of the neatest ones we saw all year, and we saw a lot, didn't we? Indeed, and I'm still a fan of your apartment. Perhaps we can have an apartment <laughs> tour one week on the GCN show, because, uh, well, from the glimpse that we get, it looks very cool. Um, now, we've got this one, which <laughs> still makes me chuckle. Um, using uh, butter as emergency chain lead. This is one from uh, Wouter Roosterveld. Um, Noisy chain, got nothing there, so just stick some butter from the hotel buffet on and away <laughs> you go. Last days, yeah. he said. Yeah. Genius. <laughs> um, next up, this from Kenya Acre. Uh, my cycling shoes look like they'd seen better days, so I gave them new life while celebrating my Mexican culture. 82% uh, hack. Very Understandable cool. reasons on that one. Brilliant, yeah. Uh, this one uh, I thought was interesting from uh, Dens. 28, which was uh, metal shelving. Just had it lying around, so I thought I'd make use of it. Attached some metal baskets, hooks, and bottle cages, inspired by bike shop displays. I wish my life was as organized as this. <laughs> and uh, that does look very neat it indeed. Does. I don't remember seeing that on the GCN show before, but yeah, no. received a lot of votes over on the app. Yeah, nice. Uh, another one I don't remember seeing, maybe you did, Si, uh, Kit Hayes 121. Inspired by my gorgeous wife's cross stitch, I did this to help me stay focused following COVID earlier this year. I don't wow. know how that passed us by the first time. No, that's brilliant. Kit, that's very yeah, nice you. embroidery. It does um, look fantastic. And if it helped you get over COVID, that's even cooler, mm. isn't it? So yeah, it's a, it's a hack from me. Yeah, Definitely. hack from me. And 91% of, who's the 9% that said that was a botch? Come that's, on. Seriously, lighten up, you lot. Uh, right then, uh, this one, which I thought was great. Uh, I thought it was great at the time, and I think it's great now. Emma Ware, a, uh, a dual, uh, what would you call her? Jeweler? No, she's not a jeweler. She makes jewellery. Yeah, the jewellers sell ju jewellery, don't they? I don't, know. I don't know. She's a jeweller. No, she's not. She makes jewellery. Whatever. Anyway. Artiste? Crack on with it, Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she made this. Answer in the comments. Isn't it um, unbelievable? Out of um, old inner tubes. Which, uh, anyway, I think that's fantastic. It's, so, a, it's um, amazing to make something new that looks much better than it was before, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and finally... Oh, she's an artist. I've just read it. An artist. An artist, yeah. yeah. She makes jewellery, but yeah, she's no an artist. No need to give answers in the comments anymore. Uh, finally, number 10, only from about a month ago. It doesn't feel like a month ago, does it, that we featured this on the show. It came in from Anded103, Tour de France Toolbox, uh, Le Tools, written on top of it. Le Tour inspired toolbox for all the maintenance bits and pieces. I wonder if it's gone into uh, full production yet. Oh. Available to buy. Oh, I think that's absolutely amazing. You could have like a Rainbow Stripes version, couldn't you, if you've got more tools and spare parts. Yeah, if you want to really show off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, don't forget to keep your hacks and bodges coming in ready for 2021. Still one of our favourite parts of the show. Always. After all these years, love looking through your hacks and bodges. Since this is pre-recorded, we are not going to have a caption competition, but we'll announce the winner of last week's on next week's show. Uh, also, of course, we haven't seen any comments on the previous seven oh, days' worth man. of video, because as we record this, they haven't been out yet. Uh, so it's a slightly shorter show than normal, but we are able to tell you, because we are so organised, what's coming up on the channel over the next seven days. This will probably be completely different, won't it? It will, yeah. By the time we get doubt. to this show actually going out. But, fingers crossed, uh, on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, as you watch this, uh, if you watch it the first day it came out, it's how to Zwift, basically getting new people into it and explaining what it's all about. Now on Thursday, GCN versus GTN Cheddar Gorge Challenge. So I think that was you against Thrillfall, wasn't it? That's right, and we need your help for this as well, because uh, you can race us on Ruby 
on uh, a virtual Cheddar Gorge, basically. Yeah, uh, right. We did it in real life and we did it in Ruby. But, I hope you uh, beat you. You've been very successful in uh, GSIM presenter challenges of late, haven't you? I have, yeah. Well, that was the one where I forgot <coughs> my socks. So uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, We've also got a high cadence interval session for you to do on your home trainers coming out on GCN training on that day. And on Friday, how to avoid crashing. Uh, always recommended. Mm. Uh, but also the best bikes of the 2020 World Tour, which you'll be able to see on GCN Racing. Indeed, nice. Then uh, on Saturday, we have got... Um, why cyclocross is basically more fun than gravel. So uh, particularly in winter time, mm. could be a controversial one, but make sure you check that one out. Uh, and then on Sunday, oh yeah, four versus one. Can't wait to see the result of that, Si. Basically, yeah. Should be the end of the series, presumably. Um, and then also on Monday, we'll be back with the racing news show, of course, over on GCN Racing. And you'll have yet another session to train along to on GCN uh, Training. 15 minutes only. But it's always surprising how much you can get done in 15 oh, minutes. Oh, my word, isn't it? isn't it just? Right, That's, that brings us to the end of the GCN show for 2020. Yeah, it does. And we should also say that although we weren't able to read any comments out from the previous seven days of video, we do look at as many comments as we can on each and every video. And so thank you all for getting involved so much, actually, in 2020. Absolutely. Yeah, it's brilliant. I think you will join me in saying this. I hope you have a very, very happy and healthy 2021. Here's hoping that life looks up even more than yeah. it did this year. Cheers all.